Hi all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine, your favourite place for the latest scuba diving news and gear reviews. Today I'm taking a closer look at the new Scuba Pro Luna 2.0 dive computer. So the Luna 2.0 is the upgraded version of the popular Galileo Luna dive computer with a large black and white digit screen. There are two versions of the Luna 2, uh, one with wireless air integration and one without. The easiest way to tell is that the air integrated version, which is the one that I have here, has this blue silicone body cover that matches the straps in this kind of petrol blue color, uh, whereas the non-AI version has a black body cover. Uh, although if you take the um, that cover off, because it's quite easy to do, uh, it, unless you go into the settings, it's quite hard to tell. The body itself measures 90 millimeters across, 62 millimeters tall, and it sits about 20 mil proud of your wrist. So it's nice and slim actually. And the AI version weighs in at about 155 grams. I can't imagine the non-AI version is that much lighter or that much different at all, um, but I only have the AI version here. So the coloring that I mentioned earlier around the body is this protective silicone shroud uh, that you can remove very easily uh, to replace the battery, gives you access to the battery compartment on the back, uh, or you can replace it if it's damaged. It's there, it's there to protect the body of the computer from like bangs and scratches. The shroud has holes for the two button user interface. There's one button on either side. The Luna 2 comes fitted with a traditional watch style strap, um, as with most modern dive computers. Uh, Scuba Pro has molded mounting points for bungee loops as well. So you can pick and choose. You can remove the straps and use bungee loops or you can just stick with the traditional watch strap. The screen itself, the bit that actually lights up, measures 38 by 62 millimeters and is an energy efficient LCD screen over an LED backlight. The screen has a blend of dot matrix and segment display. So the essential information is in big, easy to read segment display and any more complicated information can be spelled out more easily in the dot matrix section in the center. The screen is protected with a pre-installed screen guard to help prevent scratching the actual screen. Uh, you have this sacrificial screen guard that you can then replace if it is ever scratched. Inside the Luna 2, as a user changeable CR2450 battery that is rated for up to two years or 300 dives, depending on the settings, depending on how much you use that backlight. But it's one of those button batteries that's going to last a good year, maybe even two. The slim thermoplastic housing utilizes oil fill technology for reliable performance with oil filling key sections. There are fewer air spaces inside and therefore fewer issues with changes in pressure. If you have the air integrated version and you pair it with a Scuba Pro Smart Pro transmitter, you can monitor tank pressure as normal and provide true remaining bottom time or your RBT. Uh, calculations on the workload from breathing and all sorts of other clever things that it can de defer based on, like it sees how you're breathing the cylinder and it can just get a lot of information out of that. Instead of just telling you your tank pressure, it will work out how long in minutes you have remaining instead of just saying, oh, you've got 180 bar. It tells you, oh, you've got so many minutes at this depth if you continue to breathe at your current rate. Dual algorithms on the inside of the Luna 2 keep you safe underwater. They're both based on the Buellman ZHL 16 compartment algorithm. Um, that's algorithm is being used in most modern dive computers today. There are some that use different ones, but the Buellman ZHL 16 compartment is pretty standard nowadays. But Scuba Pro give you the choice of two versions, either one with gradient factors where you can tailor your decompression yourself um, to your buddies or your own particular preferences, or you can use Scuba Pro's Microbubble ADT. So Microbubble levels let you adjust the level of conservatism in that ADT algorithm to match your experience level, your age and physical conditioning. You'll also find predictive multigas inside, which does the same as the MB ADT, but if you're diving multiple gas mixes and you input them all into the Luna before the dive, then the Luna 
will recommend a better gas mix if there is one available during each phase of the dive. You'll get a little message that just says, hey, it will be better if you're breathing from this gas mix. You can then switch to it and then you can confirm it on the computer. But for most recreational dives, just diving on air or like 30% nitrox, uh, the factory setting is just perfect. Uh, scuba, gauge and apnea mode. The Luna is made for recreational diving, but you can certainly do some more advanced stuff with it, especially with that gauge mode. It's nitrox compatible up to 100%, doesn't limit you to your oxygen mix, and it has three selectable gases. Luna 2 features Scuba Pro's Profile Dependent Intermediate Stops, or PDIS, which is a setting that may add intermediate stops as you're ascending to help you off-gas a bit more efficiently. They're a little bit different to deep stops, uh, they're technically defined as intermediate stops, uh, but they're designed to limit microbubble formation in your body for safety. So sometimes, especially if you're diving deeper dives, it'll just recommend a intermediate stop before you then continue on upwards. It just helps to prevent microbubble formation. Convenient low energy Bluetooth interface lets you download dives to any iOS or Android device or PC and Mac with Bluetooth. That way firmware can be user updated if there are any updates in the future, any bug fixes or whatever, Scuba can release a new version and you can just Bluetooth it to the device. Uh, no more cables to, uh, to download dives or update firmware, you just Bluetooth it all with your smartphone or your computer. And it's also very convenient to change settings because you can change the settings on your phone and then just hit save or um, or pair or update and it inputs all of that information so you don't have to do it directly on the computer. You can pair the Luna AI version with an optional heart rate monitor belt as well. Uh, this combined with the air transmitter makes the Luna 2.0 a very powerful little beast and will tailor each dive based on your skin temperature, your heart rate and your breathing rates. If the computer works out that you're working really hard, it might be a bit more conservative, tell you to shallow up a little bit sooner. If it knows that you're nice and warm and it's a real chilled out dive, it may let you stay down a little bit longer. It's part of Scuba Pro's human factor diving. Uh, it's a great system and it just makes it a bit more personalized. For free diving, Luna 2 has a total depth counter to tell you to take a break after repetitive accumulated dives and a surface interval counter as well to recommend appropriate surface intervals between dives so that you're free diving safely. A dive increment alarm from five to 100 meter increments and in either direction or both. So as you change that increment or as you dive down or up or both that increment, it just gives you a little alarm, which is quite nice, or just a little beep. So lots going on inside. Uh, it's a smart little uh, sort of tidy little computer. Uh, let's see how it arrives and what comes with it. This is how it arrives, uh, cardboard sleeve. Um, this is following Scuba Pro's um, sort of very eco-friendly packaging deals. Um, on the outside, uh, nothing overly important. Uh, yep, yeah. uh, you've got a bunch of barcodes uh, with the serial numbers and whatnot. That's always important, uh, but there's no real information on the outside. Comes with a EVA case, uh, so nice solid. I mean, I say solid, it's that like semi-solid, but it'll protect what's uh, what's inside. Scuba Pro embossed on one side. Uh, you've got a little grab handle as well, which is quite nice, and a zippered opening. Inside of the case, uh, you get the computer itself. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. Uh, this one, because this is the one that comes with the transmitter, you get the transmitter itself, uh, which is really nice and small, um, quite compact. You get some, um, most transmitters are that kind of size, uh, but the Scoop Pro one is, yeah, nice and compact. Uh, so, um, yeah, some less space on your uh, on your first stage, and um, and it's got sort of LEDs and whatnot. So um, yeah, decent sized little uh, transmitter, um, foam insert, which feels like it'll come out with a bit of gentle persuasion. Yep, uh, and um, and yeah, you can 
repurpose this if, if you so wish, uh, or you can leave that insert in. Uh, it's just solid foam uh, to, uh, to protect your dive computer and your transmitter, I suppose, if you want to separate it from your, um, uh, from your first stage. You also have a separate section in the top with a few little leaflets inside of which, oh, even more, Okay, so we have a quick start guide, yeah, quick use guide uh, that just takes you through the uh, the brief like button menu to uh, to navigate through everything. Uh, button functions on the surface, so that's quite handy. Uh, if it's been a little while since you use your dive computer, you're a bit rusty, you want to find out how to get to certain settings, uh, they just spell it all out for you in a nice handy little leaflet. Um, you also have one for the, the actual Smart Plus Pro, uh, including oh, yeah, just the, the vital information from that. Uh, grab your free log track 2.0 app a, a little qr barcode um so yeah you can you can download the uh, the log track 2.0 plus app whatever it's called uh read first manual for air integrated dive computers and um yeah so let's take a closer look at the uh, the luna 2 itself now the computer itself is a nice neat and incredibly light little um, dive computer. Uh, some, uh, some dive computers, they can be quite heavy and bulky, especially on the, uh, the wrist, whereas this one sits really nice and neatly, especially if you take that like shroud off. Um, it's, it's obviously there to protect the, uh, the, the edges and the corners from bumps and scrapes, uh, but yeah, without it, it is really nice and neat and tidy. Um, the user interface, two button user interface, uh, it took me a little while to um, to get used to it, only like a minute or two, but once you do get used to it, it's quite easy to to understand, as well as the screen. It's got a sensible layout, uh, like with most dive computers. You've got the primary information right at the top, uh, auxiliary information down at the bottom, and then the, the mid section just has a bit of flexibility. So if it needs to add in any stops, it will tell you there. And it is useful for the, uh, the menu structure as well to, uh, to just cycle through things and you can see what's going on. Uh, hold down the uh, right hand button to enter, hold down the left hand button to return. Or if you go through a lot of the menu structures, they have a return menu, so it's quite easy to, uh, to navigate. Uh, the strap itself is a, a nice, strong, tough uh, silicone strap and yeah, it's obviously sized for dry suit diving, but if you only ever dive in uh, in warmer waters, you could trim that a little bit shorter. Uh, of course, you can't put it back on, so do be careful with that one. Yeah, I'm sure you can get replacement straps and you can also fit bungees as well, which is probably what I'd end up doing, um, just replacing the, um, uh, the standard strap with a, a bungee strap. But um, yeah, nice, neat little dive computer. Um, the screen could be brighter, but you can still read it perfectly well, um, especially with that uh, that backlight. You can turn it on. It's it illuminates the black sections as much as it illuminates the white sections, but it's still pl uh, sort of plenty easy to uh, to read. It does beep a fair amount. It beeps with every button press, but there is a, a, um, a setting on here where you can turn it off. Uh, so I'd probably be switching that um, to, to a more silent mode. Um, but all in, yeah, neat, well, well put together, has everything that you need inside of it. And um, especially when you pair it to your phone um, with their log track software, uh, it just makes changing settings that much smoother. Whereas instead of having to remember exactly where to go through, not that the, the menu structure is complicated or anything, it's pretty straightforward. So if you want to change Nitrox Mix, you could do it directly on the computer and that is fairly easy, but it's even easier just to open your phone, put Bluetooth mode on, and then just literally type in whatever gas mix and MOD that you want, uh, not the MOD, the, uh, the PPO2 that you want, and then hit save and it just inputs it into the computer itself um but yeah well put together smart i do like the colorway this is very much uh, kind of scuba pro. it's not quite scuba pro blue it's kind of the industries uh they call it petrol blue uh, or at least aqualung call it a, a petrol blue and um yeah it's smart and um yeah well well put together 
So who's the Luna 2 for? It's really aimed at the recreational diver who wants a large screen and a long battery life, and ideally a computer that will last a long, long time. A lot of dive computers today, they fit a rechargeable battery because it's kind of the trendy thing to do, uh, or the, the power demand for the screen is so high that it requires a rechargeable battery, but the Luna sticks to the old school button battery that the user can change themselves and it lasts for a year or two. When the battery runs out, you just swap it over and the computer, as long as you haven't like bashed it around, is pretty much as good as new. With a rechargeable battery, if the rechargeable battery itself gets tired and doesn't hold charge anymore, you, you need a new computer. So I quite like that feature about the, uh, the, the Luna 2. The first thing that most divers will notice is that the screen itself is nowhere near as bright or as clear as the promotional images, which I think kind of damages the uh, the kind of the view or the reputation of the Luna because you see all these primary images, you get that like expectation in your mind and then you see the real thing and you're like, oh, actually, that doesn't quite look like the promo images. Now, it should be no surprise to most divers that the screen that you see in the pictures online on pretty much every single dive computer is rarely an actual photo of the screen itself. A fair amount of Photoshop has gone into it. It's quite hard to photograph computer screens well anyway and get a true representation of what it actually looks like, especially when they're at like a, a jaunty fancy angle. Uh, so this is a more true representation of what the screen will actually look like. The backlight has a slight blue tint to it from these six LEDs on the side. And while the information isn't as clear as it is on the primary images, it's still perfectly easy to read, even without the backlight and in bright conditions as well, you can still read the screen. If you compare the Luna to its predecessor, you'll also notice that a lot less of the screen is dedicated to dot matrix. It's only the middle section that's actual dot matrix, where on the previous Luna, the entire screen was completely dot matrix, but I'm not too bent out of shape about that. Just like the dive computers that I learned to dive with, it has all of the information that you need in really big, large, easy to read digits. And for more complicated information, the middle has that dot matrix to spell it out. I do love how light and modern it feels. Uh, some computers do feel a bit bricky on your wrist, but this one feels like just a, a smartphone kind of strapped onto your wrist. It's, a, it's obviously not the size of a smartphone. It's like a compact smartphone strapped onto your wrist. And I love that they've gone to the effort of placing extra loops for bungee mounts. The strap itself is fine. And I love that they've gone with the unnecessary detailing down the sides. Um, it did have a weird kind of creaking noise when the uh, the straps moved at first, but that seems to have gone away after the first dive. I don't know whether the water just kind of lubricated it a bit, um, but personally, the strap's fine, but I just prefer a bungee strap anyway. I find it strangely nostalgic as well because it has these two water contacts on the face. It's been a while since I've had to uh, lick my fingers to activate the water contacts on a dive computer. Now that's not a particularly important feature, but if you've been diving for a while, you probably know what I'm talking about, especially Uwatech dive computers. And it honestly does very little other than pop this little icon on and, uh, and get the dive computer ready for dive mode. Uh, but it just took me back to my early years as a diver. Right now, it has an RRP of $510 for the standard version and $579 for the air integrated version. The transmitter is $400 on top of that, and the heart rate monitor is $140 retail. So the Luna sits at the higher end of the non-color screen dive computer range, but that dot matrix does help it stand above most of the competition, which is just segment display. And it's still in the reasonable price range for a dive computer that has a lot of features in it. A lot of dive computers, they just fixate on the screen, just literally what they can see. They forget about all of that extra stuff like the algorithms and the different profile features on the inside and the safety, uh, the PDIS and the uh, predictive multigas, all that kind of stuff. They forget about that and they focus purely on the screen. So try and, try and ignore that and focus on everything else that you're getting. 120 meter maximum operating depth is quite impressive. Uh, air, nitrox, apnea, and gauge mode 
is kind of all expected at that price tag. Some large screen dive computers, they just ignore apnea completely. They just put all the apnea modes into a watch size dive computer and they kind of, oh, it's a large screen, no one's gonna take that free diving. But if you want a large screen and you also free dive, it's quite nice so you don't have to buy two computers. So it's nice to see those features and it's not just a glorified gauge mode, it's actually a fleshed out apnea mode in its own right. It's not the fanciest dive computer I've ever dived with, but it's not really claiming to be. It's a very unassuming little machine that just gets the job done. The user interface is simple and easy to figure out. Uh, it took me a, about a minute or two to, uh, to figure out. One button goes up, one button goes down. If you hold one down, it's enter. If you hold the other one down, it's go back. Uh, that's pretty easy to figure out. And the dive screen has everything that I need on it. it doesn't have a compass. On the inside, um, that's not unusual for a segment display dive computer to not have a dive uh, dive compass, and it's not a deal breaker uh, in my books. You can always strap an analog compass onto your wrist if you really want to know which direction you're facing. Is it worth upgrading to the AI version or just sticking with the standard version? In this case, I'd say yes, because it's not that much more expensive. It unlocks a, a lot more features than just seeing your tank pressure on your dive computer. You can also connect the heart rate monitor to the AI version, but not the standard version. So you get that, you get all the human factor diving. It unlocks quite a lot of features. Uh, human factor diving is a great feature to extend your dive time or keep it safe based on your body biometrics. If it knows you're cold, it's going to be a bit more conservative. If you're warm, then it's going to be a bit more liberal. The non-AI version when you compare it to a lot of other uh, like dive computers, it does look a bit expensive compared to similar computers out there on the market. And the upgrade cost of, is what, $70? Just to get the, uh, the AI version, yeah, that's worth it in my books. You don't have to get the, uh, the wireless air transmitter at the same time, but if at a later date you feel like you do want that wireless air integration, then yeah, you can invest in a transmitter. If the screen, was as it looked in the promo pictures, it would be like top marks in my books uh, because it would be a beautiful screen. Uh, overall, it's a lovely little dive computer that I'd be perfectly happy to dive with at home and abroad. It's nice and light, it feels solid, very well put together and uh, a nice neat little uh, neat little build. It's a solid four stars for me, um, but it mainly detracts because yeah, I, I've been seeing the production, not production, the promotional images of it, and you go, oh, yeah, that looks fantastic. And then you see the real thing, and it's kind of a culture shock. You're like, oh, actually, doesn't look, the screen doesn't look quite like that. It's the same layout, obviously, but it's just not quite as high contrast as it's originally sold. But it's a an older style, reliable dive computer with a modern style to it. It's got the best of both worlds with that kind of longevity in it. It's a dive computer that will last for a good few years. You just swap over that battery when you need to. And yeah, it feels light and modern, um, but also strong and uh, just simple. Uh, but what do you think about the uh, the Luna 2.0? Let me know down in the comments below and head over to scubapro.com to find your local Scuba Pro dealer and of course our website scubadivermag.com to check out our magazine. Remember to subscribe to the channel here on YouTube for more scuba diving news and gear reviews. Thank you for watching everybody and of course safe diving.